Hi guys, so in this video, we are going to see how to access your placement examinations and past papers on the CBE practice platform so that you guys can prepare from your home regarding the CBE practice. So here you can see I'm on the ACCA Global website here. So all I need to do is just go to the student section and I need to click on the study support resources. So this will take me to the screen where it will be asking me to select which qualification I am doing. So if you are pursuing ACCA, you can select on ACCA. If you are doing Diploma in IFRS, you can click on this Diploma in IFRS section. So let me just take any one of them. So if I go to ACCA, now it is asking me to select the paper that I want to take for. So let's say I'll go with AFM, Advanced Financial Management. Now, you can see here there are lots of exam resources that are available. So all we need to do is just scroll down and here you can see an option called CB question practice, ACCA practice platform. On your screen here, CB question practice, ACCA practice platform. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me to the screen where it is asking me which content do I want to prepare. So there are specimen examinations, there are practice exams, and there are past exams as well. So you all you need to do is scroll down. In this, you will see this option called resources. So click on this, log into the practice platform. It's going to take me to test reach. So I have already logged into my test reach. So you can just type in your login ID and password of ACC and you can log into this. So now that you are in this particular screen, on the right you can see there's a catalog which you are able to find out here. So Audit and Assurance, AFM, APM, ATX. You have uh, F8, F9, F7, F5, SBL, SBR, Taxation. All these papers you have. So just select whichever paper you want. Let me just select AFM here. And from here, you can see there are two options, official resources and blank workspace. So if you want to practice your own questions from Kaplan or VPP or past questions or anything like that, you can just select the blank workspace. Or if you want to do the past papers or something, you can click on this ACC official resources. Now you can see there is past exam library, practice exams, the specimen exams and all. So let me just take the specimen exam. I'll click on this and here you can see there is the unassigned option because I have already assigned this specimen exam to my account. So if I go to let's say advanced taxation and let's choose UK for example, official resources, specimen examination. You can see now it's asking me to assign this because this is not yet assigned to my account. So it's going to ask me to assign it. So you can assign whatever paper you want. I have already assigned all the AFM resources to this particular account. So you can see here, when you scroll down, you can see that blank workspace has been assigned to this. AFM specimen ha paper has been assigned and AFM past and practice exams 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 exams have been assigned to this particular account, my account basically. So if I choose this AFM specimen, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click. Usually it is going to show you the start option, but see, let me just click on something else. Okay, now you can see there is start option here rather than resume, you have start option. Since I have already started this uh, specimen paper, it's going to ask me to resume. So let me just click on that. Okay, so now it's going to give me all these uh, introductory sections, which will you will also see in your examination. So as you can see here, you have the this section of the exam contains one question that is section A is for 50 marks and section B is for 50 marks in uh, AFM paper, as you guys know. I'm going to click on next, and now you can see this is my uh, question here. So just for those of you who don't know what these uh, questions are all about and how this is structured, if you are looking at CBE for the first time, see what they do in uh, specifically for professional level papers, your uh, skills level and knowledge level, this thing, this type of questions are not much applicable except for financial reporting where uh, they'll give you certain case studies and all in uh, interpretation of financial statement questions. Audit also you have this exhibits, F9 a little bit yes. So usually if uh, ACCA follows the same uh, examination technique for all the papers. So here you can see this is the part of the question. It says the following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the question. So you have one, two, three, four, five exhibits on the left side of your screen. Company background proposal one, proposal one, additional information proposal two and response from the non-executive directors. So you can see the same titles are given to you here. But here what they said company background and introduction to Coco Mocha Chai company okay that's the name of the company here proposal one is setting up a treasury function to hedge the foreign currency and interest rate risks and then proportional one additional information relating to maybe this uh, hedge they might have given additional information financial details relating to the hedging for proposal one exactly as i told you so 
hedge related information whether they are following uh, forwards or swaps or else uh, futures or how are they planning to hedge their foreign currency exposure so they have given you certain additional information and then point number four proposal two which talks about setting up four international branches with production facilities and sales teams directly so instead of having um, you know exports and imports from one country to another country why don't we set up an domestic uh, branch in their own particular country which deals with that own currency rather than we you know doing uh, inflows and outflows in foreign currency and then mm, the necessity of hedging it with the foreign exchange receivables and payables will not be there and fifth point talks about the response to the proposals the view of the non executive directors on the two proposals so the non executive directors the people who do not take part in the day to day activities of the company so these people are giving their views like this is good this is bad these are the pros these are the cons on this these are the advantages and disadvantages and all that stuff information should be used to answer the question requirements within your choose and response options okay so let's see the requirements of the question on the left side below the exhibits you can see an option called requirements i'm going to click on this so now the requirements has popped up here you can see so you can manipulate with this you can play around with this however you want so you can literally play around with this but the best thing to do is to just take a copy of all this okay just i'm going to take a copy of this i'm going to go right click copy or control c however you want to do it go to the word processor so this is where i usually draft my answer with the word processor so i'm going to paste that here okay so you can see that my question has been pasted here so all i need to do is just to make sure that everything is properly answered i'm going to take appropriate steps here so i'm going to just okay this is useless professional marks of four marks is awarded that i don't need so i have four questions here in first question number 1 section a i have four sub parts and again sub parts are also having sub parts i guess uh, yeah d has again another two sub parts okay so here we have the entire question which is taken on to my spreadsheet so i can i mean word document word processor or whatever you want to call it so i'm going to close this i have all the information required now i'm going to check one by one the exhibits so first question talks about advise the cmc company on an appropriate hedging strategy to manage the foreign exchange exposure of us dollar payment in four months time show all the relevant calculations including the number of contracts bought or sold in exchange traded derivative markets basically the call options and put options in this case they say that i have us dollar payment in four months so i'm going to purchase the dollar call options basically let's see so if i for that what i can do is see for example uh, i'll go to proposal 1 just to give you a basic picture i'm not going to do the question as such i'm not going to solve it just to give you a basic idea on how to do this cbe part in this particular paper so proposal 1 involves setting up a treasury function to manage the foreign currency and interest rate exposures but not the commodity price fluctuations using the derivative products the treasury function would be headed by the finance director the purchasing director who initiated the idea of having a treasury function was of the opinion that this would enable her management team to make better decisions finance director also supported the idea as he felt this would increase her influence his influence on the bod and strengthen his case for an increase in his remuneration okay cool in order to assist in the further consideration of this proposal the bod wants you to use the following upcoming foreign currency and interest rate exposures to demonstrate how they would be managed by the treasury function a payment of us dollars 50 zeros okay 5 million 60000 which is due in four months time and uh, a four year 60 million loan taken out to part fund the setting up of four branches which is given covered in proposal number 2 interested interest will be payable on the loan at a fixed rate of 2.2% or a floating annual rate based on the yield curve rate plus 0.4% the loan's principal amount will be repayable in full at the end of the fourth year so basically there is not an emi this is not an equated payment method but here what they are doing is they are just paying at the end so periodically you will be paying only the interest as the cash outflow so they given you some setup here just for your information see suppose i am doing some calculations in excel here so what i'll do is i'll take the spreadsheet here i have my entire spreadsheet ready so all i'm going to do is make my notes clearly so for example if i'm typing it here i'm going to type notes 1 or you can call it whatever you want or did i just click okay i guess i clicked something so okay. so i'll just call it notes 1 here and what i can do is i'll i'm going to type all my content here let's say your 
opening i don't know i'm just doing something opening balance effective rate of interest less payment closing balance something like a lease table or something or ifrs 9 effective rate based amortized cost model whatever it is it doesn't matter what it is so i have all my headings here so i'll accordingly prepare my entire table here and then what i'll do is this is the title is given as notes one right so here i'm going to say as in my word document in my word processor as per notes one shown in the spreadsheet blah 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 whatever maybe the story that i want to say maybe product x is better than product y or this is having a positive npv that is having a negative ir or whatever it is so i'll just type my entire explanation here but the thing is i'm going to refer to my notes one that is the most important one that i need to do in a cv practice platform i mean cv platform in your examination i guess so i hope i have addressed uh, the most of the issues and now coming to your uh, explanation part so here you have the word processor now for example while reading the question you feel that okay this particular part of the question is actually very important and uh, that you have to highlight something so that when you read it later you can remember that let's say you think 3 months expiry is the applicable one and not the 6 months expiry and not to i'm yet to see all the rest of the question assuming that this i want to highlight so i'm going to click here highlight and then i'm going to click this and select this part So something's wrong. Okay, so you can see it's been highlighted. Similarly, suppose I think that this red is important for me, so I'm going to select that and click on this highlight and click on the color. You can see that's applied there. Right? You can see it's been highlighted. Similarly, I think. For example, there are multiple rates that are applicable here, and I think this is useless rate. It says this one point eight eight is useless, so this is not required. So I'm going to strike through that, so that next time when I read the question, I know that okay, these are useless ones, so I don't need to confuse between them. Similarly, if you want to operate a calculator, so suppose I carried my calculator, but I forgot to calculate, uh, consider, or take a scientific calculator. So you can just take this, and you you can see here, you can switch between the normal standard calculator and the scientific calculator, and you can work on these things. So if suppose something like e power minus rt or something, if you are having that, you have to calculate on the scientific calculator. You can you can do that here. Or if suppose you are giving your performance management or APM exam and you have to calculate the learning curve analysis. So in that learning curve, you will take a into x power b, where b is logarithm of uh, learning rate divided by logarithm of two. So that those things, if you want to do on a scientific calculator, you can do it here. And then you have something called as a scratch pad, where you can put in your ideas. just like that there is nothing like you are while giving the answer or while reading the question you thought that okay this point should come first this point should come second or these are the key points that i want to address so you can put, just put it in the scratch pad for your kind information scratch pad is not visible to the examiner so whatever you are writing in the scratch pad is only for you so if you want to write a love letter that's up to you you can waste your time in the exam hall no issues at all absolutely no issues at all and in case if you are giving any paper that has formula a, Maybe a five, f seven, f nine, whatever may be the paper. If it has any formula, you can uh, you know access those formula at the bottom of your screen. At the left side, bottom of your screen, you can see help formula sheet. So you can click on that, and the formula sheet will open. Okay, so formula sheet on the right side, on the top. Okay, these are all the formula that is given applicable for your AFM examination. Right. Tax paper. If you are giving your tax paper, please be assured that majority of the information which is required, the rates of taxes, the due dates, all not due dates as such, but the rates of taxes are mostly given in the exam hall. So that's an added advantage for you. Okay. And then, if you want to switch bit from one question to another question, on the right side you have an option called navigator. So you can click on that and you can switch between one question and another question. This actually shows you the entire uh, examination situ situation. How many questions you have attempted? How many of them you have not attempted? You have opened but did not attempt, and uh, which how many of them you did not even answer? How many of them you have actually answered properly, and how many of you flagged for review? Flag for review is more suitable when you are doing a 
skills level paper where you think that this MCQ I am feeling difficult. So I'm going to just click on this right side top flag for review. And so when I open my navigator at the end of the exam, I can see that okay, there are some few questions which are flagged and I wanted to review them for later. So you can review those questions and then once your review is done, then you can click on the submit button. So let me just go to next. So I'm going on to the section B. So I'm on section B. Question 2. Question 3. So it's going to show me this review screen and then at the end I'm having the submit option here. Okay. So on the bottom you can see there's an option called end exam. And once I click on that, it's going to confirm if I want to end the exam or not. See, if you continue, you will not be able to return to the exam. Are you sure you want to continue? So if you are done, then you can click yes and you will not be able to come back to the exam. Come back to that particular question. That's it from this particular uh, session, guys. So I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep smiling. Take care. Bye-bye.